Hello friends, today I'll be reviewing the new Rhombus R1 Nova to be released on August 19th. The Nova is basically the Pulsar, Rhombus's thermoformed paddle released earlier this year, but with the addition of one key technological innovation that seems to have solved the whole delamination and core corruption issue. So let's dive in and take a look. The Rhombus R1 Nova costs $180, and you can knock $20 off of this with the code John Q. The Nova will be offered in the R1 shape, released August 19th, and the R3 shape will be released one month later. In this video, I'll cover the R1 Nova, and I'll cover the R3 in a separate video when it's released. The R1 has a hybrid shape that's slightly elongated with a curved top similar to a Yola Hyperion, but also a slight flare from the bottom to the top of the face similar to a 6-0 Diamond series. The R1 Nova measures 16.5 inches long by 7.5 inches wide and has a 5.5 inch long handle. There's a gentle taper to the neck so you can easily overwrap the grip an additional half inch over the stock grip, making the effective handle length six inches. The static weight of this paddle is 7.7 .7 ounces and the swing weight is 115, which puts this paddle right in the middle of all the paddles that have been tested for swing weight. The lightest swing weights are just above 90, which is the realm of ultra thin and lightweight paddles such as Gearbox and Prokinix. The heaviest swing weights come in close to 140, such as the Diadem Warrior and the Engage Pursuit. So at 115, the swing weight of the R1 Nova falls right at the median, and it'll feel like other popular paddles such as the 6-0 Double Black Diamond, Vatic Pro Flash, Legacy Pro, and Yola Perseus. There's one primary technological advancement in this paddle that separates it from the Pulsar and, as far as I know, from all other thermoformed paddles. This innovation has to do with the edge seam that surrounds the perimeter of the paddle and holds the edge foam. Thermoformed paddles are hot pressed, which involves putting everything together in an aluminum mold and then applying heat and pressure to finish the paddle. Check out part two of my paddle dissection series for more detailed information about this process. Part of what makes thermoformed paddles so durable and enhances their performance is a carbon fiber seam that goes around the entire perimeter of the paddle from the face all the way down through the handle. This is a solid carbon fiber tube filled with edge foam and it's attached to the edges with epoxy that cures during the thermoforming process, effectively sealing the internal parts of the paddle into an airtight compartment. After a trip to China, here is what the owner of Rhombus told me about why he thinks thermoformed paddles have suffered from what everyone has been calling delamination. Polypropylene core material is pre-cut into whatever thickness is used for a paddle, usually 16 millimeters or 14 millimeters. Imperfections in the thickness of the polypropylene sheet creates these small little air pockets between the surface materials and the core materials, and when the paddle is applied to heat and pressure during the thermoforming process, the, heat, the air expands and it causes this intense pressure which can damage the core. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. It's the same thing that made thermoformed paddles so special, this edge seam that contains the edge foam placed around the entire perimeter of the paddle, which also caused these paddles to start failing in terms of disc bonding and core corruption. So that crunching noise when you press hard on the center of a broken thermoformed paddle and the ridiculous power you get from a broken thermoformed paddle are the result of the core becoming corrupted during manufacturing. Heated air inside the paddle expands and has nowhere to go, damaging the core and turning the paddle into a spongy trampoline that rockets balls off the face. So what did the team at Rhombus land on for a fix? Instead of using a solid carbon fiber seam, the Nova has a breathable carbon fiber grid along the edge. Edge foam is placed within this grid, but internal pressure can be released during thermoforming so that the core is not compromised. They ran a series of tests on a Nova using a mechanized arm that repeatedly swung the paddle into a rubber stopper. The swing speed was over 150 miles per hour, and they performed a cycle of 10,000 hits. Then they dissected the paddle and saw no core crushing or other damage. 
I asked them to send me the same paddle that they tested and dissected so that I could look at it under a microscope to test for disbonding, for example. And the owner of Rhombus generously had the company from China send me that paddle directly. So I have it now, and let's take a look at my results. All right, so I just got the package in the mail from Rhombus. It's actually from their factory in China. Take a closer look. Yeah, I see the, the surface is worn right here from that machine striking it over and over again. And they cut right through the middle of that wear pattern. So that's a good cut. So I'm going to look at the paddle under a microscope along the edge that was actually struck. So here and here. All right. So this is the edge that was struck. You can see it looks very similar to the other paddles, um, rock carbon fiber paddles that I dissected. So you have the peel ply texture right here. And in profile, you can see there are, oh, this is interesting. One of the three prepeg layers, when it was cut, it released the epoxy on it. So you can see these, this nice profile here of the top layer, the middle layer, and then the bottom layer are these loose carbon fibers almost like a paintbrush that happened on one of the other paddles that I dissected. So it's kind of hard to see on this piece, yeah. But I'll try to separate the surface layers from the core to test for disbonding, and it is not pulling apart. Uh, the paddle that I dissected that, that did have disbonding, the surface layers pulled apart very easily, easy from the core, and the core in this area was just a mess. It was a spongy mess, and that's clearly not the case here. Let me try the other side of the paddle to see if there is a cleaner cut. And yes, there is. You can see all three of the surface layers. Again, these are unidirectional carbon fiber prepreg sheets that the peel ply is pressed into to create the texture. And then these three sheets are glued onto the polypropylene core here. So again, I'll stick my X-Acto knife in between the surface layers and the core and pull, and it is not coming apart. So this paddle is clearly not disbonded. Yeah. Now I'll also try pushing in with the back end, the metal rod of the X-Acto knife to see if I can get any kind of smashing of the core and that is just normal normal deflection you can see the the honeycomb polypropylene bending there and that's with a lot of pressure and that's with it being cut which automatically damages the integrity but i can say for certain that this paddle has no core issues after going through all the testing in the lab With its unique edge seam, let's take a look at how the R1 Nova stacks up to other paddles on key performance metrics. The paddle face is raw carbon fiber, which is to say that a texture is applied over the top of Torre carbon fiber with a peel ply cloth. It's the same peel ply texture that was used on the Pulsar, which is a tight weave similar to the Legacy Pro, Vatic Flash, and the newer versions of the 60 Double Black Diamond. This texture is known to get good spin, and my test results came back at 1729 RPM. This is a little lower than the same tests run on the Pulsars, which measured 1900 RPM. But regardless, even at 1700 RPM, spin is good on the Nova, just not top tier, which I define as anything over 2000 RPM. How does the R1 Nova measure up for power and pop? A quick review of these metrics, power is a measurement of the ball speed with a full swing of the paddle, like serves, drives, and overhead putaways. Pop, on the other hand, measures the speed of the ball using short paddle strokes, such as a punch volley and quick hand exchanges at the kitchen. Based on my maximum serve speed tests, the R1 Nova has above average power. Average maximum serve speed measured 54.7 miles per hour, which places this paddle well above average for USA-approved paddles and at about the median for thermoformed paddles. For comparison, the Nova has the exact same serve speed as the Carbon 1X and the 6-0 Double Black Diamond. 
the R1 Nova's pop is slightly above average for the 26 paddles that I've tested. Punch volley speed for paddles with the least pop measure 30 miles per hour, and the best speeds measure 37 miles per hour. The R1 Nova averaged 34.4 miles per hour for punch volleys. All right, that's enough talk about materials, numbers, and stats. Let's turn to how everything comes together for gameplay. From my perspective, there's very little difference between the R1 Nova and the R1 Pulsar. The R1 Nova might have a very slightly plusher feel than the Pulsar, but if that's even the case, then it's very subtle. If you love the R1 Pulsar, you'll also love the R1 Nova. I've already covered my personal impression of the R1 Pulsar in my review of that paddle, and I'll put a link to that review in the description below. So instead of repeating my own thoughts, I recruited the help of a couple of friends to give me their first impression of the R1 Nova during a play session. Let's hear from them about what they think about the paddle. So far, so good, John. I like it. Zeroes. Love the spin, love the feel, love the round grip. Octagon grip, I like. Oh. A little Lampert special. Yeah, good, good. I also like just how quiet. Why? There's that racquetball shot. That's great. I don't want to do that. Ah. I gave up, great, great point. <laughs> All right, so far, smooth power. Smooth power, good control. Yeah, that dropped real nice. Good shot. Yeah, real good. Good pop. I'm gonna try a couple more top spin returns. Just see how it grabs. Good. Yeah. Is that out too? Uh, that was in. Yeah, they're all in. <laughs> try, let's just try some real singles points. Full court? Yeah. Hey! Hey! Good ball. Might have been out, but I screamed loud enough. Oh! oh. It, was it was out. It's just out, yeah. Oh, man. So far, I love it. Those two shots, that bowling shot, it's hard to get enough grip and control on that, and that felt real good. Out. I feel like the swing weight or something maybe feels similar to the Yola. Or maybe, maybe the, I don't know what it is. But, hey. 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 Ah, supernova, baby. Supernova. Let's go, baby, let's go. Nova, R1. Hey. Hey. It's not you, Ben, it's me. Hey. Hey. Wow. Oh. 
Great paddle. And these things. I like the paddle a lot. Yeah. Yep. I like the feel. I like the extra long grip. I like the octagon grip. I like the curve. I like it all. I like, I like the weight. I mean, I felt I was playing a more aggressive game this time. Ripping balls and it was working. I didn't play as many resets this game necessarily with it, but uh, I don't know, do the soft stuff, but it feels like a nice power paddle. I'd say it feels very similar to Perseus. Mo most similar than uh, any other paddles that I've been trying. Um, yeah, similar swing, weight, similar feel. Maybe a little lighter. I usually put on a little bit of lead tape, so I probably would put a little bit of tape around the neck. How's the sweet spot on both of those? I was only hitting the sweet spot ah. that whole game. I just hit the sweet spot every time, so I'd say you gotta love it. You know, it, did, it felt um, more pure or throughout. I mean, I think I did just have a play a good game. I probably want one more game, one more game with this one so I can really get a feel for it, but the whole paddle's a sweet spot. Oh, come on. Huh. Going for broke there. That That's was the, not a drop. The first good shot you've hit in three <laughs> games. Yeah. Uh. Man. Blur, edit that out, edit that out. Hey. Hey. Woo! I've had to deal with this for 30 years. What do you say, 30 years of this? Yeah. Love the volleys. Absolutely love the volleys with this thing. Seven, three. And those. Oh I mean, my that's goodness. Just, that's the play. So I played with the R1, the Nova, um, the Rhombus, and the R3. Played with the R1 first. I come from playing with the Legacy Pro. Um, we did some warm ups, some skinny singles, and then some full court singles. Um, I think I got the best kind of testing out with the full court singles for both the R1 and the R3. And on the R1, um, I. I like the longer handle hitting, especially for singles, being able to grip it more and for the two-handed backhands. Um, the, let's see, the control felt great. Um, I, no complaints whatsoever on the control. Um, I think it's a little bit less powerful than the Legacy Pro. That said, I just came from an adrenaline rush tournament with a lot of overheads and we didn't hit a lot of those in singles today. So maybe the, the power on the overheads is right there too. Um, we'll test that more next time. Um, but spinning control are great. Hitting kind of the inside in four hands coming over top of the ball and then on the serve as well, coming over top of the ball, it grips very well on the face. I feel like I'm getting the revolutions in the top spin um, more than any paddle I've used. So I really like that. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I'm impressed. I've, I haven't tested very many paddles, but I'm very impressed with this one. What's not to like about the R1 really? Seriously, I mean, I don't. Did I even lose a point in singles? Let's cut to the highlights right now of me hitting my crossbar rollers. Um, but seriously, I love this battle. This battle felt great. Um, just starting from the grip, I love the long grip. I love the kind of octagon grip. Feels it fits really well in my hand. Um, the the power was perfect. It wasn't too hard, not too soft. It was just what I wanted. I like that it's thermoform, unibody, whatever it is. It's great. It feels like an extension of my hand uh, versus some other paddles feel a little flimsy and sometimes I feel like I lose control of the paddle. This one felt like it was just doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, felt really good for singles. All we played today was singles with it and as far as hitting uh, forehand passing shots, cross court down the line, both felt great. You again, just, uh, just cut to the highlights of hey, I'll give you. I'll give you a Go shout ahead. out. I've played a lot of singles with this guy and I played pretty decently today and hit some pretty good shots and hit he was flawless and, <laughs> and dominated me with that paddle. The paddle um, just felt, it felt great. Rarely didn't miss anything long, um, didn't overhit. The spin was there. Spin kept the ball in. I mean, I feel like I was hitting the sidelines when I wanted to. Um, and then even on like full stretch volleys, I feel like it has, it has great power, great control. I mean, reaching out for like full stretch. Um, if I hadn't just bought a couple of $250 uh, Perseuses, I'm, I might be switching to this Rhombus right, right now. Um, I love this. This is, this is the, my favorite test paddle I've ever used. And I usually do not like using 
random chess battles, I usually, I blame the paddle and it doesn't go well, but uh, it went great. Thank you, thank uh, you, yeah. John. Oh, thank you, yeah. Thank you, John. Like, comment, subscribe. The R1 Nova is an excellent choice for people who want all of the benefits of a thermoformed paddle. So durability, enhanced power, and a larger sweet spot. In a hybrid shape that falls between the shorter square paddles and the elongated varieties. The thing that separates the R1 Nova from other hybrid thermoformed paddles is that Rhombus seems to have landed on the best fix for delamination and core corruption to date. To me, the engineering and lab testing are very compelling, and I would trust the Nova against core corruption more than almost any other thermoformed paddle. To be clear, this is not the only solution for the core corruption problem, and other paddles are using different fixes for this problem, including the Pulsar, which focuses on the adhesion between the surface layers and the core. But again, the breathable carbon fiber grid seam on the Nova seems to be the best solution to date. So the R1 Nova gets another high recommendation from me. If you want to buy this paddle, you can take $20 off with the code JOHNQ, bringing it to $160. Thanks for getting into the weeds with me on yet another paddle. And if you want to dive even deeper into the weeds, have a look at my two-part series on paddle dissections right here and here.